Welcome back to Casual Buyers Rugby. I know it's been a while since I've posted on the channel. Um, well, it's been a week, so it's not been too long. I want to get it more regular. I promise to be more regular. But welcome back to Casual Buyers Rugby. Super excited to be back with round 15 uh, preview predictions, whatever you want to call it, um, of the URC. We did a rough last weekend, like absolutely shocking. Um, I think we got about 50%. It was a weekend of upsets, especially for the South Africans. I mean, to think that the only South African team that won was the Lions and the only Irish team that won or lost was Leinster. That is almost a shambles to say. It is crazy to think about. But without any further ado, uh, let's just jump straight into it. We're looking at the, at the table first, first and foremost. And I mean, truly, like, th this is tighter than a stitched up arsehole. Like, your grandma could only think about knitting something as tight as this. I mean, from position 6 to position 11th, there's a one-point difference. The Lions are in 11th, the, the Stormers are in 6th. Stormers on 40 points, the Lions on 39 points. And I mean, that, that's just crazy. I, I'll, I'll get into the Stormers game in a bit. But that is why we say, listen, every single point matters when it, when it comes to this. Obviously, this video will be focused a bit more on the South African teams, as I am South African. Um, but let's start off. We, we're starting off with uh, our Friday night, night games. We've got Scarlets versus the Sharks and Ulster versus Benetton. Um, starting off with Scarlets and, 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 and the Sharks. I wasn't, I wasn't impressed by the Sharks at all in the first half, but I really think they put out a, a solid performance in the second half. And it's kind of that where, where the, when the strongest boys came on or when the more first-team players came on, they really made a difference. And like, they actually, in my opinion, had uh, Glasgow defending for their lives for a bit. Uh, I think Glasgow was very comfortable at certain points in the first half. I think they, they got some trouble from the Sharks in the first half, but just an error-prone first half. And then the second half, the Sharks really um, got their groove going, got their backline moving a bit more. And I can't see the Scarlets even getting close in this game. I know the Scarlets did well against Edinburgh in that first half. I think they were in the lead at some point, like 15 or 18-3, and then lost it from there. Um, obviously playing at home against the Sharks this weekend. But I've got the Sharks to take this one quite comfortably. I'm going with the Sharks with a 12-point with a victory. Um, I haven't seen any of the squads. Um, that's just a disclaimer. So if the Sharks put out their strongest team, I can't see uh, Cara... Ach, Jeez, can't see Scarlets getting anywhere close in, in this game. Uh, if they start the same lineup that they did against uh, Glasgow, maybe the Scarlets stand a bit more of a chance. You could even say you wouldn't be surprised of an upset victory. But I'm going with the Sharks to, to cruise along now in good form. I'm not even counting the Glasgow game. They've, they've put up some good results, um, good performances. Um, and that's why they've been climbing the, the table a bit more than they did at the start. They've been looking good in the Challenge Cup. Um, so... Sharks by 12 points. Moving on, you've got Ulster versus Benetton. Benetton really starting to get that, that start of the season groove back for them. Uh, they went through a little, a little dip, um, but they are, they are back, back where they belong. Um, if you look at how they, how they performed in the, in, at the start of the season, Benetton currently on 42 points, not safe at all. Um, obviously, I just spoke about how close it is between 6th and 11th with one point, but Benetton's only two points above the Stormers. And would you put it, past Ulster to to actually go and get a victory against Benetton obviously Ulster playing at home um, I wouldn't be surprised because if Ulster wins this game let's say about 8 points and Benetton doesn't get a bonus point they're stuck on 42 and if a couple of teams win Benetton could all of a sudden find themselves in 11th again which is absolutely ridiculous to think about so um, I'm, I'm going with, with Benetton to win the game I think they've been on sensational form you've, you've got Menoncello, you've got Brex um, so good form they'll take the victory I don't think it will be a, by a landslide at all I think they're going by 8 points I know I said it might be Ulster by 8 points but I'm going Benetton to, to get the victory by 8 points uh, Ulster has just not been at the races to be honest with you uh, find themselves in 10th position on 39 points uh, moving on to the Saturday games we've got Zebra versus Glasgow I'm not going to go too into depth of this one I've got Glasgow to take a pretty comfortable victory um, I'm very disappointed in Zebra with the way that they started the season and the way that they are ending the season uh, it's almost a tough pill to swallow as, as a neutral fan because everyone wants Zebra to do pretty decent like no one wants to go into a game and, and know it's just straight off the bat a victory um 
you kind of want a performance and, and that's it's just that they've struggled. You thought maybe they've turned the leaf after they beat the Sharks at the start of the season. They didn't. Um, so I'm, I'm going with Glasgow to get a comfortable victory. Glasgow by 19 points. Obviously, it's played in Palmer, which probably makes it a bit tougher for, for the Warriors. Um, but yeah, pretty straightforward. Moving on to the Bulls uh, versus the Ospreys. Um, Bulls coming off a loss against Munster. Would they say they were hard done by, by that red card? I mean, the thing is, by itself, I, I do agree that it's a red card. But I had to put it in perspective in terms of the tackle on Kurtley Orange. So I can't even remember the name from Len in that Leinster game. How is that a yellow card? But Gwissen's one is a red card. Um, Gwissen probably has a suspension now as well. Um, I'm not too sure. I haven't really checked the news articles or any of the of, of that, but I'm pretty sure if you get a red card, you're suspended for at least two, two or three weeks. So I'm going with, with Bulls to still get the victory. Um, I don't think it will be comfortable. I know the Ospreys pulled off the upset victory over the Stormers, but it's pretty tough to do it two weekends in a row. Um, Bulls obviously want to get that, that bounce back victory. And I said it last weekend. I said the Bulls don't lose at Loftus. Obviously, they lost at Loftus the following week. Um, but surely they bounce back. Um, get one over the Ospreys. I was very impressed by the Ospreys, but the Bulls just, they are a good team. They, they lost to just a better team on the day. Munster had a, had, a, had a very good performance. And Ospreys aren't on the level of Munster, sadly. So I'm going with the Bulls to get a victory by 11 points. Um, moving on, you've got Carter versus Edinburgh. Um, I mean, if you just look at the team sheet, you would probably say this is an easy victory for, for Edinburgh. Um, they, have, they didn't start well against the Scarlets. Um, I'm actually going for the upset victory. I'm going for Cardiff to get the victory over Edinburgh. Um, I haven't been too convinced by Edinburgh and I've been really impressed by Cardiff. They've kept all of the, the games that they've lost. They've kept as close losses. They've stayed in the game for long periods of time. Um, they, they really, they've got a couple of upset victories as well. They also beat the Stormers, for, for instance. Um, they find themselves in the 12th position, quite a distance behind the Lions. But they're just like quietly ticking along, not to in any form of danger to get the wooden spoon, but they're also not a top 8, eight threat. And that's kind of what makes them dangerous, dangerous, right? You always hear this cliche of a team that's got nothing to lose has got everything to gain. So um, I'm going with Cardiff to get the victory by two points. Um, obviously, most people would probably disagree and say, listen, Edinburgh is getting it, but I think Cardiff at home, they've got enough in the tank to get the upset victory. Moving on to the best game of the weekend, absolutely beautiful one. We've got Lions versus Munster, and uh, I don't even know how to call this one. Um, obviously, I would like the Lions to win, but Munster tra travels so well. They'll take a lot of confidence from, from that victory they got over, over the Bulls. Obviously, they're not safe at all um, in... In a, in, in a position to get their home playoff game. They know if they try, if they lose once, the Bulls just surpass them once again. Um, so this, this is truly, in my mind, a 50-50 call just because the Lions also have been on very good form. The Lions has got everything to play for at the moment. They, they're just looking beautiful. They, they took Leinster to the cleaners. And, I mean, there is caveats behind it. I mean, it wasn't Leinster's strongest team. But you still have to put the points on the board. And that's exactly what they did. Um, I mean, just look at the performance they put off, pulled off against Connor uh, in, um, in Ireland. It was ridiculous. So I'm going with, I'm going with Munster to win the game. But I'm thinking it's a, it, this is a tight game. I'm thinking Munster by five points. Not the most pretty game necessarily on, on earth. But I'm, I'm going with Munster to get, to get the victory. Moving on, Stormers versus Leinster. I know Stormers lost against the Ospreys and I was so mad. At, uh, if you want to, if you want to see my full rant about it. Because I was very, very angry. Very ag um, agitated or aggravated or whatever you want to say. Um, about the Ospreys game. And I had people in the comments saying, listen, you win some, you lose some. I mean, don't be stupid. I mean, you say you win some, you lose some. For example, if, if the Stormers play, uh, if, if the Springboks play like the All Blacks or, or Ireland, where when it's a competitive team, a team kind of on your level, or maybe even a bit ahead of you, um, then win some, lose some, that's a fair statement. But not a, not a team that's below you. Don't win or lose against weaker teams. That's stupid. And then also people saying, well, if you think you're so opinionated, why don't you go ahead and coach them? I mean, 
I don't need to be a builder to, say, to see a roof blowing off a house and say that house was built shit. I mean, seriously, people, you got to calm down on it. Um, I love the banter I invited, but don't say stupid shit. Um, so I'm going with the Stormers to get a victory over Leinster. Um, just because Leinster, obviously, they won't be playing their strongest team um, in, the, in this game. Look at what the Lions did to them. I don't think they'll be taken to the cleaners like the Lions did. Um, but I'm going with, with the Stormers to get a pretty comfortable victory. Um, I think overall... Uh, oh, completely went blank there. I think this will be a high-scoring game. Bonus point victory for the Stormers. Um, let's go Stormers. By, I wouldn't be surprised if Leinster also gets a bonus point because our defence is not the best. Um, but I'm going with, with the Stormers to get a victory by 13 points. And then finally, we've got the Dragons versus Connacht. Not going to go into depth about this one. Thank you, Dragons, for coming. But it's Connacht taking this one by 19 points. Let me know what you thought about it. Um, tell me what your predictions are. And I'll see you next time. One, one.